Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Rengar. I was the fourth Kappa NA and the tenth in the world, according to the Tarkov Reporter. I've gotten a lot of questions recently since the uh, level 62 change to Kappa, which makes getting it a lot easier. It's actually 13 million less XP than it was previously, so it's a lot more attainable for most people. So I wanted to make this guide to show you guys all the tips and tricks and strategies that I use throughout countless wipes to get high level and... You know, just share this so it makes your life easier, really. We'll break this guide up into sections. We'll have it all broken up down below. So it'll be easy to jump the sections that you want to learn about. And you can skip ones you don't want to learn about. We'll be talking about things like optimal loadouts. And then we'll do server selection. We'll talk about the buttons on labs. So, like, each button has its own announcement. So you can know which button gets hit. Um, we'll talk about how some of them are there and some of them aren't. Uh, we'll talk about how the spawns on labs work. So we'll know where people spawn, and then we can push towards those spawns to kill them, to have an easier time farming our raids, because once all the players are gone, and we can't die, then we can kill all the raiders, enjoy the XP, and we can leave. We'll also talk about where the raiders spawn from each button. We will talk about things like how to farm raiders in every area of the map. We'll talk about the optimal peaks that you can take, and peak mechanics that you might not be using to fight raiders that are really strong. We'll talk about stash management, which is one people don't really usually touch on, but having ways in which to fill up your stash without having to sell for a lot of hours is very effective, and it'll save you a lot of time in the long run where you can do one big sell at the end of the day. And then we'll talk about looting as well, which is the same idea where I want to loot certain items in certain ways so that when I get back to my stash to do a sell at the end of the day, it's really easy to clean out my stash, no problem. Farm a lot of raiders, clean out my stash. We're good to go. We'll get into all of this, guys. We'll save you time, get level 62 faster, so you can get your kappa, get all your quests done, get your items. Let's hop into the guide, guys. Hope you enjoy it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was optimal loadouts. So whenever I went into any raid, I typically wore a hex grid. Um, you could also wear a kill armor, anything class 5. Um, I was doing what I did last wipe, where I was wearing class 4 armors, like the 6B3TM, which you can see right here. It's a very cheap armor, so if you're going budget, you definitely can wear this. But I'd get really mad when I'd wear this, and I would get one-shot by AP20 Raiders. It was really unfun. Uh, the Hex I just found ultimately more effective, because I was getting them from Raiders, so I could just save them to wear for myself. And then also, like, it would save me from BP Raiders, it would save me from, uh, like, pretty much any Raider in the chest. It would just save me. It was- it's so good. I can see if you're on a budget, it definitely can be a little scary to wear it, so you could like start off with worse armor and then upgrade it better later on, but definitely consider wearing a hex grid. Um, for helmets, for me, I always wore a helmet when raider farming. I don't really usually wear them when I PvP, because they don't really save you versus players because of good ammo, but raiders shoot a lot of bad ammo. Like, even BP, like my U-Latch is a bounce BP. I would say I bounce between wearing a U-Latch and bounce between wearing an Alton or a Tequila mask. Uh... A lot because the tequila mask is nice versus raiders with bad ammo because you can just kind of like hard peek them and they can't really kill you they'll just hit your helmet like four times and you're fine right so this is definitely a little scary to not wear a visor but you get the added bonus if you can hear raiders better so it's kind of a trade-off you can bounce back and forth i think they're both good they have their pros and their cons so leave that one up to you for guns i think if you want to farm raiders the most effectively especially if you're new any gun with a voodoo sight is very 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 good this is like my go-to site for farming raiders you could also use attack 30 they're both really good um for farming raiders i my preferred guns were the mdr and the mk47 i did use a little bit of the m4 but i didn't think it was anywhere near as good as these two which is why i'm going to only show these two um i will leave both of these builds on in the description if you want i'll link an imgur it's for both the builds but essentially a voodoo lets us get these uh, pixel peak kills that we wouldn't normally get otherwise so it's very important to have this scope so we have the option to head tap raiders because if you didn't know you have to headshot raiders to get the maximum xp headshots matter so we're always looking for headshots even when they're super far from us so that's something to keep in mind and for backpack i always would run a blackjack i didn't like running the raid bags because um the people you kill they, like, always have raid bags, so if I take in the blackjack, I can just yoink their backpack and put it back in my stash and just keep doing that. So then at the end of the day, I'll have a collection of raid bags, and if I need a new bag, then I can wear the raid bags. But I'd always buy the blackjacks from the bar or fragman. And then for meds, I would always do um, a grizzly, because grizzly will heal your limbs to full, like, almost instantly. It's so good. And then in my container, always, um, I'd always have extra mags, painkillers, 
extra ammo, and then definitely a green stim. If you don't use this, it'll heal you up to full. It's gotten me out of so many situations where, like, I get shot in the stomach by a Rip Raider, and I'm, like, bleeding out 10 HP. I pop this stim. If you didn't know, a green stim will outheal triple heavy bleed. So, like, if you're 10 health and you're triple heavy bleed, you will guaranteed live if you pop the green stim. It's, just, it's so effective. It'll save your life. I would highly recommend running it, keeping your container, because if you don't... If you don't take it out, you don't lose it. It's be my container for as long until I need it. Pop it, and then we're good. But that's my ideal loadouts. And also, I bring a Hemostat on top of the Grizzly because you don't have to go through the long-ass animation. But this is what I bring into almost every single Raider farming thing. And definitely bring a Surf Kit as well. I use the CMS. Uh, I leave it in my rig because they're cheaper than Surf Kits. And I didn't have room in my container because of my Gamma. It would look like this. The, the keys. It would look like my two mags, my Ibuprofen, my ETG, and my... Uh, BP, ammo, and then the uh, CMS would be my rig. So that's what it would look like for me. I'm going to show you guys farming with a mutant, but you can use the MDR or any gun that you prefer with the Voodoo. Voodoo is just so strong, and I'll show you why. Something I want to talk about that a lot of people don't do when raider farming is selecting certain servers. Now, you can sort by average matching time, but it's not really that effective for labs because it averages all of the maps. That are being played on that server so like it'll average factory and interchange and shoreline so like it doesn't really give you an indicator for just labs and we're looking for dead lab servers now there's no secret formula where i can say pick these servers and it'll work but ideally what you want to do is go to your region so my region and pick a server right so any server can really be dead you just want to pick it and hit apply pick one server at a time play a raid see if it's dead and see if you get hacked because what we're trying to do here is avoid cheaters and we want to get minimal players on our maps because players don't give xp really they give like terrible xp we need to clear the the two or three players in the map we need to farm raiders and we need to keep doing that over and over again so the less players there are the less likely we better die the more xp we get it just saves you so many hours right now you can pick anyone you can pick toronto you can pick california you can pick uh Bohar Noir if you want, like, just test a server and see if it works and keep doing that. Every day it'll be kind of different. The only thing I would say is just don't go to DC, don't go to New York, and don't go to West Coast servers. West Coast servers are filled with cheaters, and same thing with, like, New York and DC. For some reason, labs on those servers is just infested with cheaters. You can try it if you want, but I have terrible experiences with those servers. Literally anything will work if you, like, really are trying to sweat really hard for XP, you could always, like, if it's a late night in Europe, you could play maybe Europe servers, or if it's a late night in, like, Japan, and you're from, like, West Coast, you can maybe keep Japan servers. I, if that works for you, you can. But the optimal thing is to find a server that we can play and that will have minimal players, and you got to test them one by one because we don't want to die to cheaters, and we don't want to die to players because that'll hemorrhage our money. And if you die, you're not getting XP. There are five buttons on labs that can spawn raiders. There are the two up top buttons, which are hangar, and there's parking. These two are not always here, but they will spawn raiders when they are here. There are the three basin buttons, which are medical elevator, cargo elevator, and main elevator. And these three elevators are always here every single raid. Now, it's important to know that when the buttons are hit, there's an announcement that that plays to the whole server, which will indicate... Which button was actually hit? There's a special thing you have to listen to in the message that'll tell you which button was hit. We're talking about that right now. And the reason that that's important is because when I know what button was hit, I know where players are and I know where my raiders are being stolen. I can rush to that button and kill people because they don't expect me to be there. And I can get my raiders from the button that they hit so I get more XP. So we'll talk about the first one right now, which is hanger button. So if you're by manager's office, which is right in the middle of the labs, we're going to go right over here to the left and we'll talk about this right now so we're at hangar button which again is across from managers uh it is the big metal walkway and you open this door and you walk right here and the button will only sometimes be hitable if it's here it's like open the gates when you hit this it'll say a bunch of russian text and then it'll say sector b We're listening for b that lets us know that that is hangar so listen to the announcement You heard that B, admin. That lets us know that that is hangar. So when that is hit, we know that hangar was hit. We can rush here. We can look for the people that hit the button and try and kill our raiders. We'll go to the next one right now, which is going to be parking. So we're going to go this way, which is the other up top button. I'll show you right now. 
So here we are at parking. Hangar is back this way, just so you have an idea of where we are. If you open this door when parking is hittable, you can walk right here and hit this button so you open the gates. And when you hit it, it'll be the exact same announcement as Hangar. But instead of saying Sector B Admin, it'll say Sector Y. We're listening for Y. Listen. You heard the Y admin, that's the difference. They're exactly the same, but hangar says B and parking says Y. So you know when they're hit, you know where to look on the map for players. And if you get there quick enough, when you hear the button hit, you can actually kill the players before they can hide and kill your raiders, which means you get more XP. Next, we're gonna talk about main button, which is just out this door down in the basement right down here. I'll show you right now. So the next button's main elevator. Parking is up here to our right. So all we got to do is come down the staircase and we make one right and we're right at the button now this one's gonna be a little bit quiet but the keyword for this one is r or air it's not necessarily r but people just call it r because it's easier to say it sounds like air so listen to the announcement and it'll say air so when we hear that we know that it is the elevator under parking so it is main elevator so we can push here we can kill the guy but still our raider so the next one we're gonna hit is the boiler elevator which is sector g so the announcement for these next two you can't actually hear them if you were in the basement um so it's gonna be hard to do but it's the same thing where the keyword is sector g for this next one so you come down this hallway you go through boiler and you come down here and when you make a left this will be the button room right here so you're gonna hit this button and it'll say Sector G. It's very hard to hear, it's very faint in the basement. But that says Sector G. And then when you come down this way, this is the last elevator, it is the O elevator. So this one's right below a server. So up here there's actually a little drop down that you can use to get here. And this will say Sector O. So we know that Hangar is B, parking is Y, main is R, uh, medical is O, and cargo is G. Those are the five elevators that we have to worry about. Now, something to note when pushing these elevators or when hitting these buttons is you actually want to always hit sector O before you hit sector G. And the reason is this uh, little drop down here will get you killed a lot of the time. So what will happen... One of two things is if you hit this button first, an experienced labs player will sit above this hole, they'll rush into the server, they'll sit right here, and they'll wait for you to hit this button, and they'll kill you because they know you're coming here. Now, they could also drop down and wait right in front of the door, or they could peek this angle and wait for you to run down this hallway and then kill you. You know, they could just sit here and they could wait for you. Um, something else that could happen is if you're pushing this and you hear sector o get hit and sector g get hit with no break in between right so it's announcement after announcement that means that there are at least two people because when you roam at max strength from this button to this button there's at least a little break between the announcements so if there's no pause and then it goes announcement to announcement there's at least two people in this basement so you have to keep that in mind there's at least two people down here so we can get an idea for how many people are down here and where people are just by learning the buttons so i would definitely say understand those announcements go back through them and definitely make sure you have that down before you queue it up so you know what to listen for and you can find people when they hit the buttons so i want to talk about my game plan in the first couple minutes of the raid because we have to clear the players out in the raid before we kill from the raiders because if we don't people will hear the announcements they'll hear us from the raiders and they'll shoot us in the back and if we die we get no xp we have to clear the players or make sure the raid is dead so this is how i go about that so we're on our server where that only probably has two to three players and what we're gonna do is painkiller off the start so you're on painkillers like i am right now and you want to rush across what i call the dividing line now there's this line in the middle of the map right here this whole wall that runs all the way down separates the map into red half and medical side half because red room's over there and this is the med block now i'll explain why in the next section we'll talk more about how the spawns work on labs but ideally what the game plan is is get across the map as fast as we possibly can now what i'm doing is i want to make sure that there's no players peeking i'm looking for anyone running 
or anyone making sound. I'm trying to get across because people usually make sound in the beginning and then they stop making sound later on. So I need to kill them before they stop making the sound. If someone's in a corner, I'm probably going to die to them. And that's not good because dying means I get no XP. So I'm going to run across probably something like this where I'm making sure no one's down here. And there's anybody in the office. Probably not. I don't see anybody. I don't see anyone down there. No one's hiding there. Is anyone sitting in the back corner? No one's there. Is anybody here, right? And I saw this door is open. This doesn't spawn open. I opened it myself earlier. But that would mean maybe someone spawned down below and they ran up this way. Now they're in black room, right? Is that where they are? Are they are they in black room? I see, oh, there's a guy over there. So I'll go smart way and go fight him now, right? I located the players because if they did something off spawn, like they looted or they move somewhere like on metal and I heard them because across the map already. You need to find out where the players are and learning spawns will become more natural as you play this. I'm going to actually make a guide going over labs pathing and where I like actually look and what spawns I push. It's too much to go into in just this short video. But the idea is get across the map, listen and look for players. Look up, look down. You'll get used to where you see players and you just shoot them. You know, you're getting across the map, they don't expect you to be there. You're going to shoot them, you kill them, you take their loot, you farm the raiders. It is that easy. Let us talk about uh, how the spawns work so you understand why we're doing and going where we are. So we talked about in the last section, this being the dividing line of the map. Now, the reason that I call it the dividing line is the way that spawns work on labs. And we'll go into this again in a future video of mine. So if you want more info on that, stay tuned. Um... The spawns, the way they work, is they're staggered. So on labs, one person will always spawn red side. One person, the next person spawns med block, then red side, then med block, then red side, then med block. So the spawns are staggered in a way where if it's me and one other person in the lobby, if there's a, only one person, he will always spawn across from me, right? So that means I have to cross the dividing line to find him. So let's say I spawn down there. He can spawn uh, back here. He could spawn uh, in the staircase over here. He could spawn under the offices over here. He could spawn at the staircase back here. There's so many places for him to spawn, but I know what half he's on. So if I hear him, I know where to go. Now, let's say that I rush across the map and there's not a single soul. I can probably assume the map is dead. Maybe he's hiding in a spawn, not making sound. I don't know for sure, but I can assume the map is dead. Now, vice versa. If I rush across the map and I kill a player, now I have to be worried there could be someone that spawned on the same half as me, right? Because nobody can spawn on my half if no one spawned on the opposite half, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to get info about how many players are in the lobby by instantly rushing across. So let's say I kill a guy on my left and a guy on my right. Those are two separate spawns. So I know that there has to be somebody on my side probably right there there probably is it, it's more than likely if there's two people on this side there's people on my half as well right so like we're using this dividing line to give us info that most people wouldn't actually think about so you have to get across this line listen for sound because that's how the spawns work they are staggered so keep that in mind when playing labs raids you want to most of my pathing in this game for labs is get across that line and look at the closest spawn to me. I'm looking for certain doors being open. And we'll make a guide about labs pathing and how the spawns work. And I'll go way more in depth because there's so much more that I could talk about. But that's the basic premise to keep in mind. Especially when clearing the map for farming raiders. Now I want to go back to talking about where the raiders spawn for each button that you hit. Because that's important to know so you can effectively farm them. Now whenever I hit hanger button which is B that we talked about. So I'm going to hit this. And I'm going to instantly run down to my left. Now, the reason I want to do this is I want to have a right-hand peek on the raiders. So, if you don't know right-hand peeks, show less of your body than the left-hand peeks. They are really broken, especially farming raiders. I would recommend them doing... I recommend doing them in every scenario versus raiders. If you don't know why, watch this video up here. It'll explain everything. But I'm going to run here for two reasons. One, if there's raiders in here. So, I can check out the raiders here. Nope, I can clear it little by little. There are raiders here. Nope, I can move up to this truck. Are there raiders here now? Did they move up? Nope, I'm okay. Now I can use this truck on right hand peak again. Are they here? Are they here? Nope, I'm totally fine. Now, if I was back here, I can hear the raiders that can actually spawn on this back wood back here. Okay? So raiders and hangar, after you hit that button, they could spawn on this back wood and they can walk around. So if I'm here, I will hear raiders there. 
or back there. It gives me info on two locations at once. And then after I move up and I clear this area, right? I've cleared this. What I'm looking for is I want to throw a nade through the, uh, the gate over here. Through like that. And the reason for that is raiders can actually spawn when you hit a hangar button. They can spawn over here. They can spawn over here. And they can spawn all behind weapon testing as well. So this whole area, and I don't want to peek this because there's like 40 angles my eyes have to clear. That is really scary. A nade, if you throw a nade, raiders will yell at the, the nades and it makes your life so much easier. So whenever you can, just throw a nade around the map. It'll uh, make raiders calm. If there's no raiders in any of these three spots, they can also spawn upstairs the freezer so they can spawn right here they can spawn inside the freezer and they can spawn to my right over here okay now something else to be cautious of is raiders can also spawn up here when you hit this button either over here or they can spawn more over here so i kind of like to open this door and just chuck a nade like that and let it bounce either you can throw it into the middle of the map if you want to clear it down here and like all across up top you can throw it like just straight over or what you can do is you can bounce it off here and what it'll do is it'll clear this weird corner because sometimes when they're over here and you throw a nade this way they won't yell and then you'll like peek this and raiders will mop you through bushes so don't ever peek into bushes like this because if he's crouching here i can't see him but he x-ray eyes me and like i just die so i like to do that or you know you can throw it that way and then you can peek this way see if there's any raiders here right so that's pretty much all the spawns for hangar they can sometimes be across here as well but like throw that nade from up top it'll kind of cover all those angles now if we talk about parking which is over here um for parking there's an order that i always do it after playing for so long and clearing parking hundreds of times this is the way that i found works best for me now whatever works for you you're more than welcome to do but you come over here and you hit the button now what i always do is i come down and i sit on the staircase now the reason i do this is because raiders can actually spawn in this doorway, which is called opposite elbow, and they can spawn to my right, and they can spawn as obvious to my left. They can also spawn vertically across from me, and they can spawn down over by sky bridge and in kitchen. There are so many angles I have to worry about, so I like to just sit here for like 15, 20 seconds, and then I move up. Okay, so I, I didn't hear anything, right? I didn't hear anything, let me peek this way. There's no raiders crouching over here, I think I'm safe. Now, let me make sure there's no raider standing here. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Over here, there's nothing cat. We're okay. Is there any in, uh... In, uh... Kitchen? Nope, we're okay. Is there any down this way? No, we are okay. Perfect. So now that all these spawns are cleared, I can now safely move up and run across this window, and I can peek in here. Now, uh, you could peek this off a star, because raiders usually are in here, but the problem is, if raiders are here, right... And they're behind you, right? You'll just die. They, they'll mop you, okay? Now, I like to peek here. And sometimes after like 30 seconds, raiders will spawn late. And they'll come down this way and peek you here. If that ever happens, I always just break the window and I drop down. Like that, okay? Now, uh, that's pretty much all the raider spawns for parking. They can also be under, which is like under cat area. That's really scary. So, I like to just like chuck a nade off the top if i don't hear any and see if raiders yell so i'll try and get a nade either like over here or over here and they can sometimes spawn as well in what is called lobby which would be right down here they can spawn all throughout over here and we'll talk about how to peek these raiders more effectively um in the next in the next couple sections so uh when you hit main button right you can come down this way, and raiders can actually spawn in a couple spots. So they spawn a lot down this way in the past. They don't do it as much anymore, but they can spawn there, and they can spawn here. So if this door is open, they're pro uh, they're here. If it's closed, they're probably not here, right? This right door always spawns closed. Um, they're usually going to spawn right down here. So I usually come behind this box with a right-hand peek, and I can kill them through here. I can just tap them. Sometimes they see their feet back here. So you can go like, okay, that's his foot. That's his knee. That's his stomach. That should be his head right about there. So you can like do a little like, uh, you know, use a little like the landmarks to help you get up there. Or about here is where their head is if they're crouching. It's about here if they're standing. Um, you can also mop them through here. You can see their feet and you can shoot like that. I like to run up this way and you can run past here. And you can see if they're over here. If there's none here, they can also spawn off that button. And they can spawn in either this little great area right here. So be careful when you come around here. Or in the metal tunnel. So I like to peek over here and see if there's anything down here. And if there's nothing here, they can move to the next button. 
So once you've fought them in here, you can go to G button, right? And whatever order you hit the button doesn't really matter. Just whatever like, works for you, obviously. It depends on like where I spawn and stuff for what I hit. Um, so when you hit G button, what you're afraid of, I guess, for spawns is they're usually going to spawn all the way down this way, right? Either all the way down through those doors or they're going to spawn all the way down at this tunnel, which you'll hear them clumping in the metal if they do. Or they'll spawn all the way down here at the end. So pretty much all anything to your right or anything over here as well. They'll just spawn all throughout there. And then it'll be the same deal when you hit this button down here, O button. They're all going to spawn in the same spots. So they could spawn anywhere over there. They could spawn over here and over there. And sometimes when you hit the big spin buttons, they will spawn like front server. Um, So just an idea is definitely come up and check these two areas. So all the way up top, they can sometimes spawn down here. They can sometimes spawn over here. And then they can sometimes spawn at like the offices over here and over here. These are kind of for all the buttons. They can kind of spawn like out in the open. So these are just places to all look. And this is why like big open areas like this, I'll throw grenades to clear the areas. But hopefully that's helpful. Okay, so I wanted to talk about uh, the tricks that I learned in every spot to uh, peek the raiders better. So we talked about in uh, Hangar which was how to peek the raiders starting at this box, then moving down over here and peeking all through this way, right? Which is what I do every single time. It's very cut and dry. You do that every single time. But sometimes when the raiders are, uh, you throw the nade and you hear the raiders out here, you're kind of uh, scared because they're all over here and you have to left peek. It's hard to peek them from up top. It's like hard to kill these guys. Something that I always do is I jump in place to reset my steps and I b-hop across so the raiders can't kill me. Now, if you want to learn more about that, I'll leave my B-Hop video linked, uh, where's it, my, the top left or right or wherever it spawns. Um, something you can do is actually hold your C and use your scroll wheel to actually peek like this. And you can peek these raiders and shoot them through these windows, whether wherever they are out here. Or you can use this right hand peek to then kill ones behind the pillar like this. Um, something else that you could do is whenever raiders spawn back on this wood out here is I make sure I get right hand peeks by opening these doorways and I peek them like this. So I have cover instead of peeking them in the open like this where I can die. But this way I can peek them in cover and if they get, da I get uh, you know, hurt, I can fall back behind. And same thing over here, I can run past, I can peek a raider here, peek him here, peek him here, maybe he's there, maybe he's there. It just, it helps me. Or you could always nade them off the angle and then peek them. And same thing in freezer, I kind of like to use this sign as my right hand peek. So I'll run past this way, and this sign allows me to right-hand peek raiders here. And then I could, if I really, like, have a raider here and I can't get a right-hand peek, something that I will do is you throw a nade, like, through here. So you, like, peek like this. You throw your nade through, aim up, make sure it goes through. It bounces off the wall, and you peek the raider while he's running away from the nade. And same thing in freezer. You can just, you know, throw a nade into freezer. The raider will run out, and you kill him. Those are all the tips for hanger. We can move over to, to parking button again. And one of the biggest tips that I can recommend for parking button is using the glass to obscure the enemies. So, when raiders are down here in lobby, when you peek behind this, they actually can't see you. It's, it's two-way. So raiders can't see you when they're down here, so you can just kill them for free, and they're the freest kills. And when they're in cat like this, you can actually use this staircase to come up like this, and you can shoot them when they're in cat, and they actually can't see you if you're behind the glass. I usually crouch to make sure I'm definitely behind it, but that's a great tip. Same thing with these elevators. If there are raiders sitting right over here, you can jump up on this railing, and you can kill any raiders right over here. And the same thing occurs in this corner over here. So whenever you're down here, you can peek raiders all like this. This is why the voodoo is so handy. You can pixel peek one over here, or you can pixel peek through this part of the glass over here. And anything down here, up here, uh, it's just, it's free kills and they can't see you. It's just, they're the freest headshots in the world. You can also go over to, um, things like medical elevator, which this is one of my favorite spots in the game. As you come down this way, and when you're fighting raiders and they spawn down in the hallway where they normally spawn, you can come down over here. And... You can actually lay prone right here, and with the voodoo, you can use Alt-A or Alt-D to actually 
look through the crack on the doors and you can just head tap raiders while they're walking down here. So you can alt A and alt D to like look for movement and you see someone and you're like, oh, boom, boom, boom. You know, you can spray all the way through this. It, it's so helpful to do that. You can also just get a right hand peek here if you want as well. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to just lay down there. It's a really great tip. Um, you can also do the same thing where like anywhere when raiders are down here, I will come through these doors and get a right hand peek here. Make sure there's no raider sitting in this corner. They like to rat here sometimes. And you come through this way, make sure that this door is closed, that this door is closed, you are good. And then you're gonna come through this way and make sure there's no raiders here and here and all throughout there. And it's the same thing when you're in dark hallway. You wanna make sure that there's no raiders chilling all throughout there. Um, there's not many tips down here besides that one uh, long, uh, that one like lay down spot. The rest is all just taking right hand peaks. And then same thing when they spawn from this elevator, it's the same stuff. And if I'm ever, they ever spawn down here, I'll sit right against here and just right hand peek and kill them one by one when they come around. And something else is when they spawn down here, you can actually use this tarp and you can kind of like look through here. And they usually like to sit in this corner so you can look through here or you can just like peek off the box like this to get like your little uh, cheese kill on them. And then a lot of the times when you come through this way and you hit this button, raiders can spawn out through this doorway. So I'll loop all the way down this way. Loop all the way down this way. And I will peek raiders right here on the right hand peek. I'll kill them here, kill them here, kill them there. And sometimes even down there. And if this door is closed, they're not down here. But typically, I am peeking the raiders that spawn down to my right from right here. It is pretty free. So those are great things to keep in mind. The one is the, the glass. Raiders can't see through that elevator glass or through that, that main glass. And those, like, prone peak spots where, like, you can actually see through a lot of the cracks in the doors and the windows and stuff. So definitely keep that in mind whenever you are farming the raiders. It'll save your life. So I want to talk about how to effectively peek raiders. We talked about using right hand peaks, which again, if you don't know why, watch the right hand peek video that I linked in the description. Uh, it'll explain how broken it is for actually peeking raiders. And we talked about using things like this glass here and the elevator glass over here to make it so raiders can't actually see you. Um, but I want to talk about using the alt D and alt aliens. So. When you press Q or E, your character will lean like this, right? Which will show a lot of your body. But if you actually use Alt D or Alt A, you smooth lean. So you slightly lean out so you can peek just enough to shoot something. And if you peek like this, raiders can't really see you that fast. Or they have a hard time seeing you at all when you do this. So that's why we use things like peeking through the glass or peeking through the cracks or peeking through like this. Because if raiders can't see us and they can't shoot us, then they can't kill us, right? So definitely use Alt D and Alt E, and I also use uh, what's I call a spoop peek, where uh, you spam Q or E like this, even when you're zoomed in, to look for movement, right? And when I see movement, okay, a raider's there, he hasn't moved yet, I can shoot like that, right? So I can shoot a raider like that, and I'll show you this with me fighting versus actual raiders. But before we do that, I want to talk about how raiders work, honestly. A lot of people get panicked about trying to kill raiders when they're fighting them, but uh, raiders have a wind-up time when you first aggro them. So when you first aggro, they'll yell and they won't shoot right away. They'll wait two or three seconds and then they'll shoot. So if I peek like this and I see three raiders, I don't, I, I'm not gonna go, oh my God, and just spray my mag, right? Instead, what I'm gonna do is be like, oh shit. Boom, shoot all three of them, right? Because there's a two to three second wind-up and once they're wound up, don't re-peek raiders in the same spot unless you're confident that you can one tap them without dying right because repeating raiders is pretty much how you die so a lot of me fighting raiders is i kill two and i aggro one and i flank around to shoot the other one in the back because i don't want raiders to shoot me in the head because they lock on you through walls so it's like when they aggro on you like you're scared that's when they're scary it's not when they first aggro it's when you peek them after they've already aggroed so keep that in mind knowing that we're just at the wind up time let me show you what fighting raiders with the buttons looks like so I'm going to show you in Hangar what it looks like when you farm the Raiders. So again, we would open the gates, we'd run down to the right, and the whole reason for this is so uh, we have that right hand peak over here. Now my game lagged a little bit, so the Raiders probably spawn. Your frames usually drop when Raiders spawn in, so that's a good uh, thing to learn. So we're looking for 
raiders here. And I see flash fights, so I know that they're here. So all I want to do is get the headshot for that bonus XP. So I see one moving. One's right there. That's a head tap. That's a head tap. See how he yelled but it didn't shoot me, right? I'm not scared of the raider because he only aggroed once. So I can look for this last one. Usually they spawn in groups of three or four. I don't see any more raiders. I'll need to be sure. No raider yelled, so there's probably no raiders there. I'll do the same thing over here. No raiders yelled, so I'm gonna go check over here now. Raiders will you typically yell off grenades, but uh, they didn't yell there, so we are okay. Now, same thing over here. I'm gonna peek up this way. I don't see any raiders, so I think we're okay. And that door's closed, so there's no raider that spawned in there. No one's here. And we can do that nade I was talking about earlier, where you throw it this way. And I saw no raiders there. Now, again, we saw that the raiders didn't even, like, shoot back at me. It was like they were playing on easy mode because I took the right-hand peek, and I, like, they, I just didn't panic when they aggroed on me. I know that I had to hit the headshot, so I hit the headshot when it yelled at me. That's all it was. I pre-aimed. I knew where they were going to be. I just saw them yell at me. That's scary. But you saw how he didn't shoot me right away. He sprinted. He sprinted. This is an area where you want to would, would not want to repeat raiders. So he yelled at me. I shot him. I'm healing up behind here, stopping my bleed. We're going to always heal our thorax up to full. This is a scenario that you don't want to get caught in. This is kind of not ideal. I wouldn't be happy in this scenario, but it's okay. We can go like this. We can do that all DPing. Kill that raider, no problem. There's some over here that are yelling. There's some over here. Ideally, I want to fix my arm here. I see that one there, so I'm going to zoom in. He looked away from me. That's free, but ideally, what I was going to do is this peak. But zoom in, do that, and then snap to his head. And same thing over here. There's a w you see a flashlight, right? So there's one more right there. I don't want to repeat this guy from the same spot. I'm going to die. So there's two options, I guess. Well, I guess three. One is you could run here. One is you could run there. Two is you could prone and crawl past. Or three is you could kind of just like, I guess, ego run past to repeat this guy. I probably uh, would do this. I probably would just jump past like this. And then I want to peek him right here because he threw a nade. Like that. That's what I would do. You could also crawl. That's honestly probably the safer option. But that's what I would do personally here. Now, I'd normally put my arm back on. But I really don't care that much. I want to throw nades because I'm uncertain about the number of raiders on the map. So I'm trying to get ideas for where they are and get audio cues. So here, I look around. I don't see any raiders. So I want to hit the ground here. And I want to search this guy for uh, grenades. Because I need more grenades. You can get max strength pretty fast farming raiders by just throwing grenades everywhere. So I heard like two or three yell over there. Okay, so we saw them. They're going to reap their aggro so we don't have to wind up anymore. I want to run down and cross over the map to an intelligent location. So I don't want to re-peek them in the open through these bushes because raiders will beam me through bushes. Never peek them through bushes. So I'm going to go down through hangar. I'm going to come up this way. To come up behind them in server office. Now, there is the chance that they're crossing back around this way, which can be tedious when they're flanking as you're flanking. But it's always better to be safe than sorry when it comes to fighting the raiders. Because again, if we die, the XP we get is, is so terrible. You need that 1.5 times multiplier for surviving. And, you know, we're going to lose a lot of XP if we do die. So it's going to be the same thing where all I want to do now is get some stamina. I want to run past, get a right hand peek. Any raiders here? Any raiders there? I don't see them. I'm a little nervous. They could be in this right corner. They could be in front of me. They could be to my left. What's going on here? I'm gonna throw a grenade to get some more info. Got nothing off that grenade. Alright, so I don't see them here either. I'm gonna throw a grenade this way just to be safe. Alright, so they probably looped back around and they went down. I'm not sure which one it is. I'm going to assume that they went back towards the office. So I do the same thing where I flank back around. They probably went towards kitchen. They're probably sitting in kitchen and just crouched up near the front. I'll show you guys when we went back around. So, like, it's this over and over again where I'm, like, it's tedious but I'm taking intelligent peaks where the raiders can't just kill me. And you're using the same mechanics. The alt-D, the QE spam, the taking right-hand peaks over and over and over again. Pushing raiders off grenades and they run from them. Making sure you let them wind up before you kill them. So, this can happen sometimes where raiders just vanish. It's really annoying when it does happen, but I hear something to my left. Hear those steps so I can run past here. They're all there, so they went this way. One, 
two. And this third one, I don't want to left hand peek him. I'm going to move up here. Just aimed in. He's on wood right now, so he's probably walking to managers. Or he went down the staircase. There he is, right there. So I'm going to peek him like this. Alright, now this is scary because I missed all my shots. When they're flashlighting, it's a little bit scary, but don't over peek them. Like, don't hold and just peek this for sure. Like, take the shot like this because if you shoot and unpeek, they don't really shoot you. Now, I saw one down here, so I do the same thing. I want to crouch up so he can't see my head. If I just walk up, sometimes they'll just pop you in the head. But it's the same thing where I'm gonna. I saw one here too. It's a little spooky. See the one there? So I'm worried about this one now. Well, I guess we'll kill this one. And we gotta back up because of all the raiders across the way. It's the same thing. We're gonna cross back through this way. I'm gonna throw a nade. Uh, if I had a nade, I'd throw it across to see if there's any more raiders. I'm scared of these ones walking around. There's one more under. That one's close, so I'm a little scared. He's gonna wrap around on my left. I wanna clear this out. Like, one by one, clear these angles because raiders are very spooky. If I had a nade, this would be perfect. But we probably can get away with peeking it like this. Peek it like that. Granada! Take that. You see how as I move around, they don't really shoot me again. I only had the one scary instance, which was with the one that was right over here, right? The one that I missed the shots in managers. Which happens, you do miss shots and you might die because of it, right? I could have died there because of that. It happens. But like, you want to take the peak so the raiders aren't really shooting you. Because when raiders are shooting you, that's when you're going to die, you know? You have to make sure you're not getting shot by them. There's another one more here. It's the same thing. Take the right hand peak. Use the voodoo scope. I can see his head through that, right? So I can get the top. I, with the red dot, it's harder to see his arm there and get the headshot. But like, that all helps. And now, make sure whenever you are killing raiders, that you're always pressing F on their body because you get the bonus XP. You see, every time I press F, I get XP for being on their body. So always do that. It's very important. But yeah, that's pretty much how I fight raiders across the map. And hopefully that was a good demonstration of that. Where we don't just ego repeat it. That's how you die. We just we, we went we went here, we went here. We're always moving around the map, right? We're not just peeking the same spot over and over and over again. You saw how the voodoo can really help us do that, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to looting, um, if you're trying to maximize your XP per hour, something you want to make sure you're doing is not looting all of the key card rooms you want to make some profit for sure but like usually pick one half of the map and just loot that for me it was almost always looting red violet and then cat that's what i would do i'd loot red violet and then cat make tons of money doing that and then when it comes to raiders like definitely like milk up with the stacking rigs so use rigs to help you get more space but always take grenades now usually when i'm playing labs like for real i don't normally take nades but like when you're doing this for um when you're doing this for like xp if you take your nades what they let you do is you can bulk sell them at once so like when i'd finish a day and i'd sell at the end of the day i'd sell like 200 of each grenade and like it's literally one click and one listing and all the grenades go up you know you don't have to deal with uh Deal with listing a thousand different items, so it makes your cleanup so easy. Also, always take, like, the mags and the ammo and anything vendorable. Like, uh, when you're trying to farm the XP, you can, if you want to, like, go super hard min-max for money, you totally can. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I will tell you that it definitely is more worth it making sure that you, uh... Definitely is more worth it making sure that you are picking up items that you can sell in bulk and vendor because like looting things like stim rooms is really effective for that like looting green side of the map because you can sell the like 14 stims you get pretty much and like the rest go on the market and you'll sell like 30 stims at once all at the end of the day you know so that that is something that i think is really important because if you look at my backpack right it's pretty much all grenades right now and you just like three grenades per raider pretty much so you can just stack up your whole inventory on grenades and then after you do that, you can sell them all at once. So the items you loot, just keep that in mind. You want to loot vendorables and like things you'll use, like a, a hex grid. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear that, you know. Like things you want to get items in bulk, so it's like very little clicks. Sell everything at the end. You click one button, you select 200 grenades, and you're you're done. You're good to go. So keep that in mind when looting if you're trying to be super min max about your XP. Now, when it comes to stash management for farming raiders, uh, definitely if you have thick cases, empty them out. 
when I was farming like 10 hours of labs a day, I would fill up my entire stash plus three thick cases every single day just full of like rigs. It was ridiculous how much loot you can get when you're just straight farming dead lit raids with raiders. Now, um, again, what we're trying to do here is keep our stash empty. So I would literally dump out everything. Like I stopped, uh, I stopped buying new gear and I would only wear gear that I had in my stash. So I cleared out all of my existing gear. And then I would like, every time I got a player gun, I would always use their gun when I died. So like, um, I was always getting stuff out of my stash. I didn't have a stockpile of like, I had no extra armor. I had no extra guns. I had those buy between every raid if I needed new stuff. But like, what it lets you do is fill up your whole stash and all of this. So at the end of the day, what you can do when you fill up all of this is you can sell it all at once. Because you don't want to go do a raid, sell, do a raid, sell, do a raid, sell. That's inefficient as fuck. I could do 10 hours of labs without having to stop to sell once unless I was broke. And then I would just like, you know, sell because I haven't sold in 10 hours. You know what I mean? Like you, you can lose a lot of money playing this if you are dying a lot or you haven't sold right so like i would i would sell at the end of the day i'd go up like like 10 15 mil a day at selling all at once and like you would just select 200 vogs put them all up 200 uh f1s put them up a thousand a golnik put that up a thousand bs put that up like you're doing it all at once and you're saving yourself so much time and if you want to like min next time a little bit for selling too you can always unload all the mags as like you come out of raids and like put grenades in grenade cases or empty out rigs like whatever works for you but like I would literally just dump my bag, go again, dump my bag, go again, dump my bag, go again. This saves you time because the less time you're out of raid, the more time you're in raid. So that's the more XP you can get per hour. And XP per hour matters because 5k XP more an hour, we're not selling like a lot to you, but it's like 200 hours of raider farming from 42 to 62. So like make sure that you are saving that because that extra 5k an hour could only mean 150 hours now instead of 200 you know so like every little like micro detail of min maxing helps i i hope that this guide can help you level up faster you know make sure you're taking the smart peaks first raiders abuse the glass mechanics that i showed you take the smart peaks go 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 here go there don't retake them don't peek them through bushes use a voodoo it's so strong clear the players out off the map you know like there are so many little things that you can do that all add up to effectively raider farming and i hope this was helpful if you guys have any questions Please, you know, join my Discord, check out my stream, ask me, comment below, whatever you have. I don't mind answering your questions. I hope this was helpful. If you want more guides, let me know. We have more labs guides coming. I have a lot more planned. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much.